All right, so I'm going to be doing a review on uh, DC Universe Ruby or Ruby DC Universe. Uh, this was a comic that was sent to me by my good friend Chris. Uh, Chris, thank uh, uh, you. Know him best as the Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, thank you once again for the comic. And yeah, so let's talk a bit about this series. Like, let's really dive into uh, this comic. So the comic in question is uh, not really a sequel to the Justice League Ruby crossover that came out last year. It's more of, a, of its own story. It's really much its own story. Um, and it's all. I guess it was also made to promote the second, and be loosely based off of the second Justice League uh, Ruby animated film. Now, this comic... Uh, actually, I think issue seven just came out. And they were already they were already pumping out the trade. So it's interesting to see a DC Comics trade of any kind actually like come out um, of such uh, with the quickness. Um, so I, yeah, I think issue seven just came out. So I guess like they were just like doing a web the web comic first, and then they were uh, doing the uh, the uh, actual issues. So yeah, so what is this comic about? Well, like I said, this is not a sequel to just uh, to Justice League Ruby. This comic is actually a whole DC. It should have just been called Justice League Ruby Two or something. But I guess like since it wasn't connected to Justice League Ruby, they didn't want any confusion. So DC Universe Ruby or Ruby DC Universe is about uh, the Grim have invaded the DC universe. The Grim have somehow found a way into the DC universe and so have Team Ruby. The story begins in Gotham with Batman um, taking up 90% of the comic and eventually finding his way to Team Ruby where Team Ruby alongside Batman discover that Re Remnant is actually absorbing uh, Earth. It's actually like, it's not, it's not just the Grimm coming through, it's actually like a whole mess of elements from that universe from their universe so remnant is consumed is absorbing earth into itself and team ruby now endowed with new costumes that serve no purpose to the comic um uh have to team up with ruby uh, with the dc universe characters and the dc universe characters actually and the people of earth are getting semblances as well which really i'll get into why i don't think that's a great thing to begin with but it does lead to a great moment in the comic. It really does lead to a really cool moment within the comic, but still. Anyway, so, um, it's a lot, so, the first off, let's talk about the costumes. Yeah, they serve no purpose here, other than they're in the DC Universe, so they have to look like DC characters. I'm like, why do we have to do that? Like, that serves no purpose. The costumes have no real purpose either, other than, I guess, to either sell toys or interest in it or make i don't know like and they even like the reason how they make it is like dust mixes with batman's gas bombs and they get covered in it and they get new costumes that serve no purpose like they really like i thought like they would get these costumes to, uh, to buy the justice league to better equip to fight the grim in their universe like that would have made more sense, but no, it's just they're here to look cool. They're here to look like DC Universe characters, and even then, that fails. The comic is written by the same person who wrote DC. Uh, who wrote the? Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it basically is written by Marjorie Bennett, who I think is a good, really good writer. Um, but I wasn't wowed by the Justice League Ruby crossover, and I wasn't wowed by the writing here because it's try it feels like it's trying to serve two masters of trying to get you to understand the DC universe and trying to get you to understand Ruby. And they go and they have just these huge word bubbles. Um, the artwork um, is a lot to be desired because the first two issues, I think, have really decent artwork. I really do think that the artwork was very well done, but the uh, but issues three through seven, Oh god, it's a fucking slog. It's a it's a struggle to get through that artwork because n all the characters look way older than they need to. All the Ruby characters look older than they need to be, and um, there's also like just some like some bad facial designs for some of the characters. It really also has this thing of jumping around, 
like it has like some weird edits and cuts. Like uh, there's one scene of uh, Zatanna is explaining Wonder Woman's powers, and in the middle of it, like and they're in the book room, like they're in a they're in a library on Themyscira, and Zatanna is explaining all of Wonder Woman's powers, and in the middle of it, Blake and Yang just start sparring out of nowhere. And I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? I, I don't get it. Um, the other thing is, too, is that while Remnant is merging with Earth, is consuming Earth, people are starting to get semblances, and, like I said, none of them really are good. Like, the supervillains, for some reason, don't get semblances, and they don't properly explain it, only the superheroes do, and a lot of them suck. Like, just straight up suck. Like, uh, Batman's is like, I get precognition, um... Barbara's is that she can touch someone and like know everything about them and Nightwing is he just makes you feel good that's really it the the one though I will say when Superman is like uh helping Superman after he's been possessed by a grim he go, he goes you know uh Ruby asks what's well, your semblance and he's like I think you know it's the power to see good in everyone but that's always been my superpower and flies away and I'm like that's a good Superman scene I'll, I'll give that one that one but yeah, the action is all over the place, and narratively, the story falls apart towards the end. This, I think this, go, like, it has seven issues, and it drags. I'm like, can no one find a per- like, why is it so hard for these crossover miniseries to find, like, either they are too short, or they just drag and, and lose the narrative? Because the whole narrative of, oh, Ru uh, you know, Remnant is absorbing Earth, but also, we're in a fairy tale. Are we? We don't know. And the the laws for the Grimm are just made up as they go along. But then again, that's Ruby. It's it's storytelling flies by the seat of its pants. So, yeah. All in all, if you're just if you are a major Ruby fan, I'd say give this a look. Um, it's not the best crossover. It's not the worst. But yeah. So uh, yeah. There's my review for it. Also, there's also a scene in the first two issues take place in Gotham. The first two issues should be called. Batman Ruby because it really takes place in, in the first two in the first two issues. Then it goes cycles back to Gotham at the end. So um, it should be called Batman and the DC Universe meet Ruby. But yeah, there's a weird thing where Alfred when they go to a mission to Arkham Asylum to stop a Grim invasion in Arkham, Alfred goes with them. And I'm like, why the fuck did Alfred go with them? That makes no. When is ever. Batman take when has ever Bruce taken Alfred to a mission to Arkham? And I know someone's gonna be like, well, actually it happened in this issue. No. Shut up. I don't fucking care. Anyway, so there you go. There's my there's my review for it. Anyway, once again, hope y'all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.